in today's quick video, I just want to cover how to create atmospheric dispersion to some extent using free software. Now, I'm not saying this is going to fully compare to buying an atmospheric dispersion corrector, which fits between your telescope and your camera sensor to correct for atmospheric dispersion using pr prisms in real time. But from what I can tell, just looking on the screen, it does do somewhat of a reasonable job. Now, I've got two sets of data here captured on the same night of Saturn, one using my Takashi, one using my five inch ED doublet. Now, normally they're fairly comparable, but I did notice that when I switched from the Takashi to the five inch doublet imaging Saturn, that Saturn exhibited quite a lot of atmospheric dispersion. And I didn't really notice it so much on the Takashi, which was I thought interesting because I just literally swapped between the two telescopes. I didn't get quite so good data with the five inches I usually do, but I want to use it as a bit of a demonstration about how to tweak the atmospheric dispersion the best you can in software. So what this is, is a TIFF file um, straight out of auto stack art where I stacked 2000 frames, but I chose to pick the best 50%. So it's actually 1000 of the better frames. And it's a good foundation for doing further processing in Registax, where typically you just move some sliders along and magically see planetary detail appear as if by magic. So if I select the five inch ED doublet data and zoom in, you'll see what I mean. Hopefully you can see the blue on the underside and the red on the top. Now, atmospheric dispersion differs from things like chromatic aberration in that you tend to see the, the fringing split between two colours linearly. So you'd, you'd have like the blue on the bottom and the red on the top, as opposed to something like chromatic aberration, which is a general haze around the object caused by the optics not aligning the primary wavelengths at the exact same point. The atmospheric dispersion is caused more by the light entering the atmosphere being refracted by different amounts depending on the wavelength. So blue wavelengths are refracted more than the red wavelengths. And I've been for years using SharpCap, just literally popping it in, popping my image in here. I'll just do a quick RGB balance to color align everything, make it look a bit more natural. And then I'll dip into RGB align, take a quick gander at the planet, see where the blue is and the red is. So I can see the blues kind of below where it should be. So if I go to the blue channel here and push up a few times, it will push that blue channel up. And the opposite of that, the red looks like it needs to come down. So looking at the red channel, we can click on the red button a few times. And that looks like it's even things out nicely. Get rid of that, have a closer look. If we zoom in now, we can see it's looking a lot more even now, but Unlike usual, when I slide my wavelet bars across, the detail is not popping out as much as it often is with the five inch refractor on Saturn. And especially when you compare it to on the same night, just half an hour previously, or probably an hour at the most. If we look at my TIFF file for a thousand frames stacked for Saturn through the four inch Takashi, See, it's already sharper and there's not as much if I zoom in we can see there's not as much um, atmospheric dispersion uh, maybe just a bit of blue there but not enough to warrant really adjusting I didn't think at the time so if we know, if we slide the wavelengths on this one we can see that is the difference in data on the same night on the same object and what caused that could it be aperture difference could it be the cooling could the atmosphere have changed in the half an hour hour i i don't know but the data for the five inch showed so much atmospheric dispersion i thought it'd be a good prompt to sort of discuss whether you can actually get by using rgb align or whether an atmospheric dispersion corrector is worth its weight in gold now <laughs> I'll, I'll leave you guys to leave your thoughts in the comments on that one because I'm not entirely sure. I've been quite happy doing RGB Align and um, 
usually I do get a sharper image out of both of those telescopes. So is it worth going for an ADC to improve things? Maybe, I don't know, but it's an interesting thought, I thought. So I made a quick video about it. Okay, thanks for watching and see you on the next one.